one of the terms is new economy, that there is actually a new economy that is now emerging out of a lot of the breakdown of, that we're seeing with, with um, uh, the old economy. And so there is no one probably who's more in touch with what you see across the country. Could you give us some highlights, some things that are uh, you know, inspiring to you or uh, that have moved you in terms of uh, what is going on in communities? Well, there are these, as I say, thousands and thousands of things of the kind I've mentioned, small co-ops and worker-owned companies and land trusts and other many, many hundreds of land trusts, which is a community ownership of land to prevent gentrification and capture it for... But on the top of that surface, there's a whole other level. And uh, in Cleveland, for instance, there's a so-called Cleveland Project, which involves a series of worker-owned companies linked together uh, through a nonprofit corporation, so it's a community-wide effort <clears throat> connected to the hospitals and universities who buy from these. So that takes the, mo the model to another stage. It's a little bit larger and more sophisticated, and I think that's going to grow in different parts of the country as well. We're seeing many cities uh, beginning to explore second stage development, and we'll go beyond that. The next stage will be more advanced, I'm sure. Now, the Democracy Collaborative and you have been directly involved in the birth of the Evergreen Cooperative uh, project you called the Cleveland Project in Cleveland. Uh, could you talk about how that that uh, that is considered as a bellwether, and a lot of people are watching it. Could you talk about how uh, what were the early um, developmental steps that that uh, uh, helped create uh, that momentum at this? Well, point? it's um, what happened was we had been doing work on these various forms of different co-ops and worker-owned companies and land trusts, municipal enterprise. And we, called, we had a big conference at the Aspen Institute in Colorado, bringing the heads of organizations of the people interested in social enterprise of a national organization and the employee owners have a national. We brought the heads together and thought, well, you know, you all share this principle of democratizing wealth. Um, maybe we could do something together. And people were very interested, but of course they fell back into their silos. And so we then thought, well, let's try it in one city bringing to be, the people together, and we happened to do Cleveland because, as usual, well, I knew somebody or somebody knew a friend. Yep. And out of that conference, we brought many, many different people doing practical things together and talking about them. And uh, one of the foundations uh, got involved and got excited about it, and it turned out it made sense to try it in Cleveland. Uh, nobody had planned to do that at all. It just was developed out of this experience together to take it to the next step. You described it as kind of an accident, that, that it was a top-down um, beginning in Cleveland in the sense that Cleveland Foundation uh, became interested and really played the pivot role of kind of getting things rolling. Um, in Detroit here, we have a different situation. We do not seem to have institutions that have stepped up uh, around the questions of, of ownership and equity. Uh, but we have something actually more interesting, which is we have from the grassroots a growing number of small community neighborhood-based initiatives that in fact are ready to embrace and are embracing different aspects of rethinking work and rethinking um, ownership. And so I'm wondering if we could talk, just think out loud for a moment, we could talk about uh, what kind of advantage and what kind of opportunity that presents for people here in Detroit? Well, it's a, I think it's a very exciting possibility. In the Cleveland Project, the big hospitals and universities agreed to buy from this complex of worker-owned companies linked by a community-wide corporation, nonprofit corporation. So you have universities and hospitals and public institutions, libraries, uh, museums, all who are anchored, so-called anchored institutions. And if they were to come together and link it to something where there's so much vibrancy in the grassroots organizing going on here uh, and take some of the lessons we've learned from this uh, Cleveland work, that would be even more exciting because it would come out of a, a more democratic pro process that's been already developing. So <clears throat> both of these methods are, are very good ways to start and uh, we'd love to see something like that happen here. What kinds of steps could we take here in Detroit that might uh, lead to the creation of an entity that could nurture and accelerate and strengthen the growth of what's already occurring here? Well, I think the, us you know, the usual process is a lot of 
one-on-one -on -one conversations with people like the ones at the conference here, but also some of the universities and hospitals and pointing to the work that's been done. Uh, but particularly here, since there's so much grassroots work going on, uh, seeing if people wanted to do this, and if so, begin to put forward a plan. Uh, there are several other cities around the country that are now looking at the Cleveland model and trying to replicate, not, not replicate, we don't use that term, but to interpret it in terms of their own local circumstances. Evolve it, adapt Evolve it to it. the local conditions. Adaptations. What cities are you talking about? Well, there's uh, almost certainly there'll be one or two, possibly three in the Washington metropolitan area, uh, almost certainly Atlanta. Uh, Pittsburgh, there's now discussion going on in Oakland, uh, there's, going, there's discussions going on in even some parts of Texas where there's some preliminary discussions going on. So we think this is, uh, and again, it brings together changing ownership, but uh, amongst the variety of Americans who, conservatives, liberals, small business people, uh, at the height of the recession, when nobody was getting bank loans, banks in Cleveland financed this work and they're conservative banks. The main main point, this, this is changing who owns property, but it makes sense to people if it's done intelligently, practically, with a good business plan, and change, even if it changes ownership, it, in fact, it turns, excites people. And small businessmen in the area get a better market because there's more activity. Uh, we find these ideas are, are amenable to left, right, center, if it's intelligently done, and no rhetoric we want to see something practical, then you find many, many Americans are interested in these kinds of ventures. It doesn't have the ideological kind of discussions that go on at the national press, which really is irrelevant to all this when you come to a city like Detroit or Cleveland. So if you're going to go back to, to uh, Wisconsin, your home, Racine, and you're going to talk to a friend from high school about the work you're doing, and this approach, uh, community-based, um, uh, employee ownership, cooperative-based uh, employment has much to offer to Racine, to, to any any city in, in the United States right now. How would you how would you describe it? How would you frame it in in a language that that your friend from high school might uh, find uh, interesting? Well, the simplest way is if you look around what institutions really are at the heart of the city that are not going to leave. And usually it's hospitals and universities, sometimes the libraries and museums, so-called anchor institutions that are anchored. And often they depend upon public money, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, education money, so they've got a public quality. Uh, they buy a lot of stuff. And in Cleveland we found in this small neighborhood they bought three billion dollars worth of things. That's with a B. With a B. And I'm sure in Racine they, they buy a lot too because this was a neighborhood of 40,000. Um, most of it being bought from out of town. Some of that could be bought locally, so that'll make somebody rich. You want to make one person, one entrepreneur rich and he'll go back to the suburbs? Or do you set up a structure that is a business structure that will kind of spread the ownership and build the community at the same time. So that's what we did in Cleveland, could do it in Racine, which is community cooper cooperatives linked together in a revolving fund and a nonprofit corporation so that the benefits go to the workers and employees who own the companies, but also stay in the community to build more jobs and more tax base and help the small businessmen in the community through that kind of attempt to really relocate and help restructure the use of these funds. Uh, we think it makes sense and it's quite practical. And again, it has a vision to it that is really democratic, democratic ownership. Small D democratic. Small D with cooperatives, uh, but also community building. And that's the heart of it. I'm from Racine, Wisconsin. How do you really rebuild the health of the community, not just economically, but socially and democracy and individual people having something there that's really strong and do it in an environmental way as well. Um, all the businesses that we've worked on in Cleveland are green businesses and uh, that makes sense for any community uh, if you take the, if it's, if it's practical, if it makes sense you can explain it to anybody and if not it's probably your problem because you haven't thought it through enough to be able to explain it. Great. Well, we're uh, so happy to have you here in Detroit for this conference. It's great to be here. We hope you'll come back soon. Yep. If people want to learn more about uh, the Democracy Collaborative, uh, you have a website that's uh, community-wealth.org. Be sure to put the dash in, community-wealth. There's another one without the dash. It's a good organization, but it's, it's a different one. Perfect. Gar, thank you so much for your time. Today. Thank you. Great. Okay.